Hello, Salem. Pastor Andrew here. Just wanted to let you know we've had, again, another day of technical difficulties. Um, had some Conway Court problems, we think, with the Internet, but I think it seems to be working again. And we recorded the service, and unfortunately, those files don't seem to be working properly for me here uh, to get those uploaded. So I thought one way we could do this is a little bit quicker is to share it with you here, uh, at least a sermon recap. So we shared some uh, references, first of all, to um, God being with us uh, in this sermon um, called What Indiana Jones Was Looking For. So I mentioned John 1, 14, and then 1 Corinthians 6, 19 through 20, which talks about Jesus and also the Holy Spirit. First of all, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory. Glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. And then moving to 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? You are not your own, for you were bought with a price. So glorify God in your body. And so as temples of the Holy Spirit, as knowing that we have a God who is with us through the person of Jesus Christ, we then consider this Old Testament challenge of looking at um, the tabernacle. And so let's dig into that a little bit. The um, Ark of the Covenant is detailed to us in Exodus 25, 10 through 16. And this is what Indiana Jones was looking for. I joked this morning that um, as a pastor, sometimes I get to do research by watching the Indiana Jones movies again. And so um, you might be familiar with the Raiders of the Lost Ark. So here are these words from Exodus 25, 10 through 16. They shall make an ark of acacia wood. Two cubits and a half shall be its length. A cubit and a half shall be its breadth. And a cubit and a half shall be its height. You shall overlay it with pure gold. Inside and outside shall you overlay it. And you shall make on it a molding of gold around it. You shall cast four rings of gold for it and put them on its four feet, two rings on the one side of it and two rings on the other side of it. You shall make poles of acacia wood and overlay them with gold, and you shall put the poles into the rings on the sides of the ark to carry the ark by them. The poles shall remain in the rings of the ark, they shall not be taken from it. And you shall not put into the ark, and you shall put into the ark of the, the testimony uh, that I shall give you. And so um, we looked at the tabernacle, and we talked about how it was very similar to a nomadic tent dwelling of that time and how the pieces represented a lot of things about God and has been our habit. We've been pointing to Jesus in each of those. So just to kind of chat with you about those for a minute is uh, we talked about the tabernacle itself as the tent of meeting the dwelling place, the place where God would be with God's people. And so the camp would be around this tabernacle. It was to be central. God was to be central to their worship and to their lives as well. And it was to be portable. Therefore, there's something that is lost when we then move uh, to the, from the tabernacle into the temple and then the temple into uh, permanent synagogues or permanent sanctuaries and cathedrals. There seems to be something lost uh, in that time from that time till now. Because uh, we forget that God goes with us. God just isn't here in the house of God, so to speak, but that God goes with the people. So I think during this time of the pandemic, we've learned that, that the church has indeed left the building. God is with us wherever we go. We've learned to remember that God is portable, <laughs> that God is everywhere present. So that's what we think about when we think of a tent as a place of the dwelling place of God, that we are these tents, these temples, these tabernacles of the Holy Spirit as well. So just to touch on a few other things, there was the bronze altar, and this is a place where the sacrifices happened. And so therefore, these the sacrificial system may seem very strange to us, but I joked this morning to say, how many of you are carnivores, uh, or at least omnivores? Some people are, of course, vegetarians, but even vegetarians will sometimes have a grill that they grill vegetables on or do those certain things. So while a sacrificial system may seem strange to us, uh, a lot of us have grills or stoves at home, and so there's uh, a similarity to that in an ancient Near East uh, nomadic tent home dwelling. And so this was a place where sin was paid for, where restitution was made. 
And ultimately, that points to Jesus in that he paid the ultimate sacrifice. He made restitution for our sins. Then there was a basin that was a place to um, clean or purify, um, especially in a time of dusty and dirty living and animal droppings and the smell of animals and the smell of these sacrifices and people didn't have showers and baths like we do in, in our modern times. So it was a dirty, dusty, and smelly kind of living. Therefore, the priests had to have a place to purify themselves. And so this reminds us that, uh, again, we're filthy with sin. Our righteousness is like filthy rags, as uh, I believe Isaiah puts it. So uh, we come to God for cleansing and purification. We think of baptism in this way. We think of uh, the washing of feet as symbols of this. Then there was a lampstand. Um, this might look like the menorahs that we're used to for Hanukkah, but this was, I think, it had seven instead of eight pieces to it. And so um, this is like a porch light. You know, we would leave it on to say you are welcome here or to let people know that someone's home. So the porch lights or the lampstand was to always be burning. They were to keep it filled with oil and the light of God, the light of Christ in the world is to always be burning. And we are also the light of the world. Then there was an altar of incense. Uh, go back to what I was talking about in Dirty and Smelly. These um, altars of the altar of incense was to provide a sweet smelling aroma to kind of mask the other things and therefore um, to cover over as, as God covers over our sin, um, the sweet smelling prayers of the saints, Revelation 5 talks about this, is a beautiful thing to the Lord. And then there was the table of presents, which is a lot like perhaps our um, table for communion or what we might call the altar. And so our sanctuaries are even, even set up quite a bit like the tabernacle where we've got kind of the narthex or the, the, the outer courtyard around the church. Then the sanctuary itself is kind of the holy place. And then the chancel is often what you might call the holy of holy place places. And often uh, a lot of churches are designed to where you, if you don't step up into the sanctuary, you at least step up to the chancel. Uh, so you're going up to meet with God. And so that is where we have what you might consider the table of the presence, where there are 12 loaves uh, to represent the 12 tribes of Israel. And it's also a sweet fragrance. And uh, it was actually, the direct translation would be bread of the face. So the bread of the face of God. And so it had a lot to do with both God's provision, but also seeking the face of God and, and being in God's presence. So we can see Jesus all over these things. As a matter of fact, the most holy place or the holy of holies was probably like a bedroom, the most intimate space, a, a space where a God who doesn't sleep would reside. And so this is where what Indiana Jones was looking for. This is where the um, Ark of the Covenant would be, this beautifully ornate gold-plated thing that had these uh, cherubs over the top, not cherubs as in naked babies that are flying with wings. That's not what a cherub is. They're actually quite dreadful. They would strike awe into people. So um, the, the ch I'm not cherubs, cherubim specifically. And so think of it this way, that God would have this beautifully ornate place that would ultimately be God's throne, and he'd come and sit with us as if just pulling up a box or pulling up something simple to sit on. <clears throat> so as we see with Jesus, and as we see with the tabernacle and the temple and even our beautiful sanctuary here at Salem, these are just shadows of the worship that we will see with God. And so when Jesus died on the cross and the temple curtain was torn in two and the most holy place was exposed, that's because it was no longer needed. We now have direct access to God. So I hope that we will learn through all this how these things point to Jesus, but also how God is meant to be central to our lives and to our worship. Thanks be to God. Amen and amen.